Hi, so in the previous slide, we have seen the three key focus areas for 5G technology, but how it can be achieved, there are certain key capabilities that are defined by ITU. So they came up with the new generic term by IMT 2020, which will be designating the 5G key performance indicators. Before that, there was IMT Advanced, which was primarily used for the 4G technology. And here in this particular diagram, we can correlate and understand the comparison between the 4G and the 5G key capabilities. So until unless these different capabilities, which are defined by ITU, are not achieved, it will not be considered as a true 5G network. So if we look into the specifications defined by ITU in terms of a peak data rate, this is at the cell level, it should be 20 Gbps. We'll understand that how uh, this 20 Gbps can be achieved with the different technologies and techniques that are there defined in 5G. We'll talk about that in the subsequent slides. But this is the cell level throughput which has to be achieved in downlink. But what about the user level throughput that is 100 Mbps in downlink? that is defined by ITU. In terms of spectrum efficiency, how many number of bits per second per hertz is are being transmitted that defines the spectrum efficiency. And it has to be increased with time with any new evolution because spectrum we understand is one of the costliest asset for any telco. So here we can see the target is to get three times more efficiency in spectrum in 5G as compared to that in 4G. Mobility. We have uh, fast uh, mobile users, which can be catered upon in this case, 500 km per hour that can be catered by 5G as compared to 350 km per hour in 4G. The latency in 5G is being targeted as a one millisecond. And here in this case, this is quite a stringent requirement defined as compared to 10 millisecond in LTE or 4G. The connection density, again, in, in case of massive machine-to-machine -machine type communication, where millions of devices to be connected to the, to the cell site, that is possible in 5G, which was not possible in terms of 4G. Then in terms of network energy efficiency, because now the more focus is to utilizing the resources efficiently, and we understand the most of the OPEX part comes from the energy itself, any reduction in energy cost in that case or the introducing more energy efficiency will help to enable a sustainable networks going forward. So here we are looking into these key areas.